After 10 years of free-for-all experience and five years of free-for-all tourneys, here are my top tips for free-for-all in Age of Empires 3. Number one, be friends with everyone possible early on. Don't steal that treasure. Instead, upgrade the stagecoach line and let someone else get the native post for upgrades if they need it. Early on, it won't really matter anyways and everyone will view you as more friendly. Number two, if you want to be aggressive, pick one player to focus on, but consider the civilizations that are at play. If you're playing as China and you're stuck between a French player and an Aztec player, take out the French player first because you know they have strong cavalry and cavalry is your civilization's weakness. Consider these things as you're picking your opponent to take out first. Get wrecked. Number three, going off of that, sometimes the Civ matchup is more important than your strategy. Some civs are just easier to play against than others. Keep this in mind when you're in the game lobby and you see what other civs players have. Number four, if you do plan a rush, put the age two hot air balloon in your deck if possible. You're able to scout your fleeing enemy and end them before they have a chance to come back. It's extremely helpful for taking out players early. You also get to use the hot air balloon sporadically as you age up and you'll be able to get more map control and see what other players are doing. It also counts as a great late game perk as the hot air balloon reloads so fast that it feels like you basically have an advanced one age four. Number five, mobility is better than any other strategy and range is second. All others are tertiary. Fast long range units are often the strongest at big map combat and often with lots of walls. Horse artillery, genites, eagle runners, horse archers, yabusame, howdahs, and sea, siege elephants are some examples. My favorite example is the late game combination of cavalry and artillery, specifically Hussar and horse cannon. This quick, speedy combo is not only destroys everything, but it gets there in record time. Number six, going off of this, to win late game matches, consider impact over efficiency. Yes, the Hussar horse cannon combo is extremely expensive, but it's the best mobility and destruction that you can get. Therefore, if you have one or two weakened opponents left, it's worth the trade-off because you can take them out before they build back up. Number seven. Another example of this is deleting your villagers. Early on, I was obsessed at keeping 99 villagers, but when you have 50K of every resource, there is simply no need. Delete 20 to 50 villagers, depending on your situation, to gain a serious numerical advantage in combat. Maybe you have so many resources that you delete all of them. Sometimes the risk is worth it. Number eight, don't forget the water. A fight near even a puddle, and you can use warships. Ships cost no population, and all but canoes deal splash damage over long range. Aztec players, this is your time to shine. Factory wagon! And monitors are the best example of this. They can completely turn the tide of battles by breaking down walls, spawns, or TCs or factories using their special shot. Number nine. Training time cards are the single most oh important upgrade goodness. cards that you can have. You will feel the pain if you play civs like India or Ottoman with their lack of infantry training. Units! Spawn units! Dude, I'm losing my mind. Please spawn units. Number 10. If you are going toe to toe, having full pop is the most important thing. If your opponent cannot match your mass, you can even fight into direct counter successfully. Obviously, you won't be careful with this, but 100 muskets will beat 50 skirms. Russia players know this better than anyone. Number 11, use flanks. You'll likely have to fight on concentrated choke points. You can still dedicate some pop to a side build. It takes more actions per minute to defend 20 halbs on a side push than it does to initiate that push. This distraction can give you an advantage in culvern battles, cavalry switches, etc. If they don't notice the side push, it's even better. Some of our favorite units are always the exceptional infantry, Dops, Pumas, Samurai, Halbs, Grens, or Rams, you name it, it's such a pain to defend. Number 12, all units can offer value. Switch up your compositions. Focus on what your opponent struggles against, kind of as we mentioned earlier. Is your opponent an Ottoman player? Go really heavy into ranged cavalry. Is your opponent Aztec? Go really heavy on skirms. Is your opponent British? If you have a musket that competes with redcoats, use that. Is your opponent Sioux? Use lots of goons. Number 13, going off of this, if an opponent only has a wood heavy unit and that's their main option, 
force them to make that unit, like longbows, for example. This applies to Yumi, Coyote Runners, pretty much every Iroquois unit, but Forest Prowlers and Streelets even. Number 14, with that being said, study your opponent's deck. Speaking of studying your opponent, are you interested in studying video game development? That's the specialty of Southern New Hampshire University. SNHU has one of the largest accredited online degree offerings in the country. In their program, you'll learn how to create realistic, dynamic gameplay experiences with game AI, game physics, 2D and 3D graphics and interface design, as well as programming languages like C++, C Sharp, and Java. And you'll learn 3D modeling and texture with game art software. Courses are taught by faculty with real world experience. SNHU is radically affordable. Their online tuition rates are some of the lowest in the nation. Go to snhu.edu forward slash samurai to request free information about the program. When you request information, not only will you be supporting the channel, but you'll have the opportunity to talk to a real person and ask questions about the program. I think this is a great opportunity for those wanting to study game development and programming. Thank you, SNHU, for sponsoring. See what cards they have. If you know the civilizations well, you can see what upgrades they might be missing in their deck. Maybe they don't have all of their economy cards, but you do. Then you know that their economy will be lacking late game, and so maybe your plan is to go for sustained attrition combat and beat them out that way. Number 15, take trade posts. Use natives and upgrade a stagecoach in the train. Every possible way to extend past your economic and military limits. Know your native upgrades and what units it can benefit. I made a video of the top uh, native units that you can ally with in Age of Empires 3. This is the Asian Dynasties, but it still can help you out if you're on DE. Melee sieves and archer sieves are specifically most likely to benefit from most of these native upgrades. Nothing quite like stacking Zapotec and Maya upgrades onto your Rumi or Jaguar Prowl Knights to really break those units. Number 16. This, of course, includes infinite native shipments from your home city. Some are better than others, obviously, but that extra that population 60, simply helps. That is 60 population siege potential right there on a flank. And Brit players, we're begging you, please use the infinite Cherokee shipment. Number 17. In terms of your deck, infinite shipments are essential, and each civilization has some that are stronger than others, as we previously mentioned with the infinite native cards. Infinite one heavy cannon from Germany with its additional Ulans is one of my personal favorites. Maybe it's as simple as a resource card. Whatever it is, if you don't have one infinite card in your deck, you will regret it because you'll have 15 run-up shipments two hours into your game. Number 18, use pets. Easily one of the most overlooked units, pets are an effective addition to any army. Spanish war dogs are an obvious example, but also Aztec jannies, but other civilizations have additions too. Think of the uh, disciples from China, for example, right? They're not exactly a pet unit, but they act similarly. Uh, those small units may not seem like much, but they do add up. Number 19, have at least one mortar in your army when attacking. This may not sound like much, but when you are in a complete stalemate, this one mortar can help break down walls or barracks and slowly push your opponent back. Every inch counts once the World War I simulator begins. Number 20, speaking of, use walls effectively. The method of using the select all units hotkey and deleting the pillars is effective for this because it saves wood and it builds walls faster. But feel free to use them to grab every square inch that you can get. It is especially helpful with skirm and cannon focused armies. Number 21, vassalize your conquered enemies. Sometimes you simply need numbers on your side and gaining a vassal does just that. It might be said though, once strong enough they will try to break away to freedom again. Keep them in check or ensure victory sooner rather than later. Number 22. Also, do not forget that you can obtain victory more than one way. Use a trade monopoly victory with full effect. Make sure you don't use it too soon, though, because once you do, your opponent or opponents will now be on the lookout to take out your, all your trade posts. Try to get as many as possible and fortify their positions before using it to ensure surprise and ease of defense. Number 23. However, using them to obtain victory does not need to be through the five minute trade monopoly victory timer. This is something I never see players do. If there's one opponent left and you are stuck in a deadlock, use the trade monopoly victory to attempt to draw their army away from their base. They will have to destroy it in order to continue playing. While they're distracted in doing so, you can use your numbers to successfully defeat their army or push on a side attack and destroy essential economy buildings and defenses as they desperately try to end your trade post monopoly. 
Consider doing this several times until the opponent is defeated or the trade monopoly timer runs out. Number 24. As we discuss tactical button applications, spies must be mentioned. Yes, spies is an extremely effective way to gain advantage, but you must play it at the right time. If there are too many players in the game, they will surely take you out together as you have become the biggest threat to everyone. Likewise, if there are three players left, be careful playing it first. The other two may attack you. Also, don't play it as soon as you gain all the coin to do so. I see way too many players doing this. You'll need a bank of resources to continue to make units shortly after, especially if they immediately attack you, seeing that you've played spies. So wait until you have a comfortable barrier of extra coin before you send those spies out. Number 25. If you plan on using your factory producing artillery, like rockets, great bombards, or heavy cannon, make sure that you get the imperial upgrade before your factories are taken out. This happens often with civilizations that have the infinite card in age 4. Brits, for example, with their infinite rockets. Uh, players often forget to get those upgrades from the factory. They have their factories taken out and maybe go imperial later, but their infinite artillery is not imperial, and this is a big blow. So make sure you get that upgrade before your factories are taken down. Number 26. Also, if you feel like you are going to be attacked or overwhelmed soon, don't send all your factories. Maybe you send one and save another for a rebuild if you feel the political pressure. It may be hard to resist the temptation to send both, but it's not always wise to do so. Number 27, have fun with the chat and the politics. Some people are so uptight and free-for-all, but one of my favorite parts is the ever-dynamic chat and political games. Have fun with it, but don't be ridiculous. Number 28, grab treasures. This may go without being said, but there are sometimes some great treasures out there that last the whole game. Use your explorer's abilities to break down valuable ones over time, and continue to grab them as the discovery age ends. Many players forget to utilize them after age 1. Number 29. Moving your economy and an eliminated opponent's base. This is GUA's FFA showcase that I played in, and pink was eliminated, I was purple, so I moved part of my economy in pink's old base. And you can see on the minimap that some of the colors get overlapped, and even GUA himself had a hard time finding my eco until after the game. So it's a great way to hide your economy, be in a different location, and be hidden on the minimap. Number 30, using blockade to block infinite shipments. Also in the GUA showcase, I blocked the India player from sending infinite Yurumi by playing blockade. Yes, it was a ton of coin. But there was plenty of players eliminated, and it was the thing that I was most afraid of in facing India. In the end, it helped me win the game, and the guy rage quit because he couldn't play Yurumi anymore. That's my top 30 tips for free-for-all. Let me know which ones I missed down in the comments below. Thank you for watching.